Hello. Guess what, y'all? I got fat. I gained 70 pounds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, it turns out that I, I wasn't having twins like I thought. I just had one baby. And she's very beautiful. And she's seven months old now. She's so amazing. I think that being off scope for a whole year... I didn't miss it, but I did want to say hi to you guys one last time before it gets deleted forever. I'm not gonna show her or show y'all pictures or anything like that. I'm not gonna tell you her name, but she is very beautiful and healthy, and I honestly, like, my story ended well. Out of all the drama and terrible things that happened to me over the years, like, I gave my life to Jesus and my soul to Jesus. And he just, he blessed me with a family and a happy ending. And I'm so happy about that. And I think it's really come full circle, my life. I started on Periscope, like, real miserable and hating my life. And now I have, like, the best man on earth. <laughs> I have the best man on earth, the funniest little bird, and a beautiful baby. Yeah. Yeah, God has definitely blessed me for living in the right way. So... And I quit smoking. I quit smoking weed. I vape now. And I'm gonna quit that eventually. I'm very blessed. I did gain... Se uh, I weigh 174 pounds now, though. So I'm super fat at this point. <laughs> but I did start a keto diet. And... It works. We have all gained weight. <laughs> I am fat as all get out. <laughs> well, the doctor told me and told me and told me over and over again, I need to work out. I need to work out. <laughs> and I didn't work out. I did not work out. Well, my husband looks so thin. Because he's on keto too. And I'm not like... I'm not losing weight quickly like I thought I was going to. <laughs> okay. A 46 inch butt only looks good on girls that are like... 5'8". Not on me. I'm 4'11". <laughs> I wear an extra large now. <laughs> my pole is up. I, I can't even pick myself up. <laughs> I do have the keto sticks. <laughs> I pee on them every day. <laughs> Kiwi sleeping. No, I'm not on TikTok. I, I don't have Instagram. I don't have, like, Facebook. I don't have Twitter. My, my life is going really well right now. And I think that, like, a minimum social media presence is healthy for me. Like I said, I didn't miss Periscope at all. Hold on, there's way too many comments. 
Yeah. So, so, so I wanted to say that social media is the devil. It is so divisive. It's so divisive. And this app is a cancer. There are so many child pedophiles on this app. Yeah, there's like cool, interesting people, but this this app, just like Twitter and all this, all these other apps, they're a cancer on humanity. <laughs> they're disgusting. Yeah, so my my husband works all day. And I watch the baby, and he he hangs out with her, like, in the morning before he works and during lunch. And now he's, like, sitting with her, making sure she's sleeping. Kiwi's doing great. Everything's going great. This is it, y'all. I just got out of the shower. I... I ha when I say that I've been blessed, like, I didn't end up having twins. I just ended up being really fat. <laughs> but not only is my husband, like, the most kind, patient, amazing person that I've ever met, his mom and family have spoiled our daughter to the point where we don't even really we haven't bought many clothes or toys for her she has everything she could possibly want where am i gonna go from here live out the rest of my life with my husband in private happy and like look forward to the day that i get to see the lord that's it <laughs> That's it. I've been through so much and I th I thought it was fitting to give like a last goodbye. No, I'm not in any um mom groups or anything. I do have there's several churches nearby. The best part about being a mom is really like just being with the baby like I, I i get so emotional when i see her because i'm like wow i, I can't believe this is my life i can't believe that my my life came such full circle like from being really terrible and miserable and working in a ungodly industry that made me miserable because i was too lazy to just get a regular job to i have a partner for life and I have a beautiful daughter that I get to spend 18 years focusing on raising into being a decent human being that goes on to eventually contribute positively to society. So, it's nice. Yes, yeah, Sheen, I remember you. No, she was very tiny. She was tiny like me. And I had to get a C-section. It hurt so bad. It was terrible. Yeah, children, they, they really change your life. Before I found out I was pregnant, I really wanted to go to paramedic school, but I don't think that I'm going to anymore, just because, like, I really, like, the way that the world is going, I need to be able to focus every single moment 
of my time and attention to what she's learning and be available to go to like PTA meetings and stuff. It is, it's ungodly out there. I don't know. I'm I'm gonna be thirty this year. I don't I don't think so. I think it's a little too old. I don't know. I probably won't. She'll probably be my only one. Yeah, that's what I'm doing right now. There's nowhere to follow me on on social media, unfortunately. Yeah. Okay, so... Hi, Denise. You did? How's my son? I have no idea. I messaged his dad and was like, Hey, you know, we need to be civil. Because he will be 18 one day and he will want to come find me. And I would like to get to know him before he's a young man. But I will wait. And I haven't heard back. So, meh. But I do have a beautiful, blossoming little baby girl that I am going to be spending the next 18 years molding into a Christian, godly woman. And she is just my new project for the next 18 years and beyond <laughs> so like can you guys believe it like what a fitting ending to periscope you know i i do have kiwi and Kiwi loves the baby. And the baby loves Kiwi. Yeah. Full circle. It's great. I'm happy. I mean, I don't really, after that C-section, I don't know if I want to have any more kids, to be honest with you. And yes, happiness is the best revenge. I think it's, I think it's good. Because in, instead of, like, instead of like lamenting on all the bad things that has ever happened to you just know that like every day is an opportunity to change your life around mm -hmm. you had four c-sections girl I was literally shaking on the operating table. Like, I wanted them to put a stick in my mouth because I had so much Pitocin in my body. I was like screaming that I was biting my own tongue. And I was. And they wouldn't put a stick in my mouth so that I wouldn't bite my tongue. They, they had to like chill me out <laughs> yeah it was it was really difficult for me i had the shake so bad it was ugh, it was so terrible because i didn't get you know how like c-section moms like they they get a picture with the husband and the baby and the the sheet is still up I didn't get that because I was freaking out. I was freaking out. They had to they had to put me out. 
Like, I don't remember being wheeled from the OR to my room. Well, okay, so her umbilical cord was wrapped around her shoulder like a, um, like a seat belt. I was eight centimeters dilated. And the doctor was like, her heartbeat is irregular. So we're going to have to do an emergency C-section. I, I cried and I cried and I cried because I was like, <laughs> the first thing I said was, I'm not going to be able to work out. I'm so fat. <laughs> oh. But I was like, do what you got to do because... Oh, it's so scary when the cord, when they tell you the cord's like wrapped around something. Yeah, I, uh, well, I don't know if I want to have a V back. Just because, with my luck, it would probably pop anyway. <laughs> She looks like her dad. She doesn't look like me. But that's okay. She's beautiful. She's so cute. <clears throat> I, I mean, it kind of have to be like a decision that my husband also wants to make. I really don't think he wants another baby. <laughs> I think we're good with, with just the one. No co-sleeping. We're, we're doing everything by the um, uh, American Association of Pediatrics like guidelines, like strict guidelines. So no co-sleeping, no sleeping like on the side, no sleeping with a lot of blankets. Um, they also recommend that they don't eat rice anymore. So, so no, no rice cereal or anything like that. That's a new, that's a new recommendation, though. Just, just because, I, I don't know, I, well, they, they came out with a thing saying that rice and oatmeal cereals had a lot of heavy metals in it. So, but she eats, um, she likes sweet potatoes and carrots. She loves carrots. Yeah, you just read that. It, it said from what I from what I saw, it was mostly like beech nut. So we feed her Gerber. No, I don't. I don't make the baby food, just because I think baby food in a can is pasteurized it seems safer well the the thing is oh and i use a talc free baby powder we we already know well talc itself not only does it have asbestos talc they had that lawsuit with like women who get ovarian cancer <clears throat> so my f my favorite is um the Burt's Bees baby powder. I love that one. I 
I think that's what the Burt's Bees is. So, I was at a, a wholesale store like Costco. Um, and they had these pouches. I'm just so happy to see you guys. I, like I said, I didn't miss Periscope, but it's nice to like tell you guys that I'm doing great. The rest of my life is gonna be good. It's happy, but only because I decided to get to know Jesus. Nobody is ever gonna have a fulfilling life unless they get to know the Lord. And that's how it is. Like, I'm so content with life that it gets boring sometimes, but, oh, look. Look at what I'm doing. I've been working on this, this cross stitch since September, and I'm almost done. I'm almost done. <laughs> it's huge. It's, uh, oh, it's in Chinese. It's 179 centimeters by 107. I think it's 16 by 16. Yeah, so my paintings, and I know them because I was well, and I'm really sorry, and I hope you got your money back. But if you didn't, just email me, and read. so that was the first step. And that's fine. CBD juice. That is like non weed. You can buy it at the vape store. And it's all right. Yeah, I was going to do a makeup palette with someone, but it never panned out. See, all those things never panned out for the best way to know, to get to know Jesus, honestly, is just open a Bible. And that's the truth. Just open a Bible to the New Testament and start reading. A lot of people get really turned off from the Bible because they start at the understand the beginning. You kind of have to read the New Testament first. And I learned that the hard way. Because <laughs> for a while I was really bored. Like Leviticus is very boring. Deuteronomy is very boring. <laughs> it's super boring. But you know what? I, um, so before I go to bed at night, I put on, um, the, the King James. It's actually the one that I played on Periscope. I put on a King James new testament book every night before i go to sleep and for a whole week every night i listen to revelation okay so then the next week i listen to isaiah and when i tell you my jaw freaking dropped on the floor at what i was hearing like isaiah is an elaboration on revelation and i mean somebody could say oh that's just john plagiarizing isaiah but the parallels were freaking me out it was crazy it was like the exact same thing so if you read the new testament first 
and then go back and read like the prophets, you will be like, whoa. <laughs> Like, Isaiah and Revelation go together, so, like, they, it's the same prophecy, pretty much. You're welcome. I don't, I don't really listen to solfeggio tones anymore. I haven't. Daniel, too. Yeah, Daniel is good. Daniel is really good. I love that book. You know who I, I like on um, YouTube for pastors? There's a guy named Robert Breaker and a guy named Spencer Smith. They're both very good. And there's another guy too, Dr. Gene Kim, but he's a dispensationalist and... I was hearing from some other Christians that dispensationalism is not really biblical, but a lot of the things he says make perfect sense. Like he he broke down how how the devil who is a cherubim mirrors like all the qualities of the cherubims that Ezekiel saw, like with the lightning and all that stuff because his symbol is a lightning bolt and it says that he fell from heaven like a lightning bolt, right? So he was like comparing the vision of Ezekiel to what the devil actually is. And I was like, wow, like that makes sense. The more, the more you like read the bible and think about it it's very interesting it, it's it's really interesting and when i tell you like the level of peace and happiness is is like if you really want to get to like know the bible It'll give you a, it'll give you like a sense of peace that therapy will never give you, ever. So. I'm so fat, right? Not that, it doesn't matter to me. Like the only thing, the only problem that I have with being fat is I can't fit into any of my clothes. <laughs> I had to buy new clothes. <laughs> I weigh I weigh 174 pounds. I don't want to go shopping. I don't want to go shopping because <clears throat> if I do, it'll validate what I look like, like, in a way that, like, I don't want to be resolved to stay this heavy. No, I didn't end up having twins. I was just getting really fat. I was so sure that I was going to have twins, but I just had one. <laughs> I'm sorry to say, but Scientology is a scam. There are some really good um, YouTube channels out there of people who have actually escaped Scientology. Like, from high up. And, uh... It's very insightful. <laughs> I 
I no, I I do have clothes that fit me. I I do have clothes. But I only have like I have like seven pairs of pants. <laughs> What's my favorite food and why is it butter? Okay, so actually on keto, butter is good for you. I do like keto and Atkins. Like I get the Atkins treats and the Atkins and the Slim Fast shakes. So keto is great. Listen, Jason, you don't understand me. You obviously don't know me. Because I used to do drugs and smoke cigarettes and weed and drink. Now I don't. I had to start vaping to kick my habit of cigarettes and weed. And now I have to wean myself off of that. It's a process. <laughs> the comments are so mean. They're always mean to me. I don't care. The, co the comments are eye roll worthy. <laughs> yeah, I plan on weaning myself off the vape here pretty soon. My pregnancy was not good. It was not good. My back hurt. My hips hurt. Well, I'm married. Yeah, and I got pregnant after I got married. So, there you go. Motherhood is amazing. <clears throat> I'm not going to do an autobiography. I don't know why there's so many people in here. I'm very loved. Yeah, per Periscope is a cancer. It It is a tumor on the body of humanity. So is Twitter. And so is Instagram. Twitter is where radical right and left people go to s virtue signal and spout off lies. Instagram gives anyone of any age an inferiority complex because people still forget that they all photoshop and lie it's a visual lie and facebook is just cancer because mark zuckerberg is a lizard person <laughs> like i i have facebook messenger to talk to my mother but i don't even use it anymore because i have a phone that works <laughs> I text my mom. <laughs> so. <clears throat> he 
just is. Mar Mark looks like, like an alien pretending to be a human, and Jack Dorsey looks like, like he could be Osama bin Laden's son. Like it's not a good look. It it's not a good look. It, it really is. <laughs> I I did I did miss talking to you guys a little bit. But I have a happy you know what? I think I started coming on scope because I was lonely and miserable and I didn't have any friends and it was like a way for me to vent and talk to people but now that I have a family and I'm happy I don't need it. Kiwi sleeping. Yeah, ha happy people don't scope, I don't think. I really don't. I think there are some happy people that watch, but they don't scope. When you, when you scope, it's like trying to fill in need for emotional attention. And now that I have a husband, a baby, the bird, a, a house that I have to like keep up. There is no void. There's, there's no, there's no void to fill. I didn't say you were unhappy, Jen. And it's nice to be fulfilled. It, it's nice to have a life. It, it's nice to not need to be validated. Do you know what I mean? Aww. <laughs> Well, my, my email address is in my bio. If anyone wants to email me after Periscope is done, not to dox me, but if you want to talk to me. Hey, Gina. Yes, you are happy. I haven't scoped in like a year either. But then I saw that Periscope was was closing and I'm like, dang, this is this is cancer. But I still kind of miss everybody. <laughs> and and you know what, too? <clears throat> I knew <clears throat> I knew it was going downhill when I saw Honey Boo Boo eating Chinese food on here like three years ago and there was a bunch of grown men in her scope. And then it, it turned into, no, I'm serious. And then it turned into a bunch of like pedophiles with like little pizzas in their profile. Yeah, you guys don't remember me talking about that? Oh, I was I was so upset. I I got on. I was I was telling her to leave scope.
That child did not need to be on scope eating Chinese food. And I got on to her and I told her to leave. And it turns out her mama was a meth head at the time and not supervising her. I don't think any underage child should be, yes. Um, I don't think any underage child should be on Periscope or any other social media app. If you are under 18, you have no business being on the internet unless it's to look up answers for school. <laughs> Oh, well, there was, <clears throat> there was a lawsuit against Twitter. Some 13-year-old boy got groomed into sending pictures of himself to a pedophile, and then the pedophile posted it on Twitter, and they got redistributed, and the parents filed a complaint, and somebody from Twitter said that it didn't um, violate the community guidelines. So they're getting sued right now. And the child is still underage. Yeah, the child's like 16 now. Yeah, it's awful. It's, it's awful. It just came out on the New York Post like uh, almost a month ago now. Oh, they're all pedos. That that's why that's why you you get blocked for saying Donald Trump's name, but if you post a photo of an underage child on there, you're fine. It's sick. It's sick. Oh, TikTok is, TikTok is cancer too. I don't have, I don't have TikTok, but I end up coming across a lot of TikToks. They make like TikTok compilations on YouTube. And I am telling you, these children, these Tom Hanks moved to Greece. If that doesn't tell you something, he moved to Greece where um, there's no extradition laws. Thank you. I, I, I got my nails done for Valentine's Day. I haven't got them done in like almost three and a half years. So, yeah. <clears throat> but, um, these these children on TikTok look older than me. I'll be 30 years old this year, you guys. This is that's what I was I was saying. I before I got pregnant, before I found out I was pregnant, I wanted to be a paramedic and going to paramedic school would literally be like it takes 6 weeks to get an EMTB license and 18 months doing clinics to get a paramedic certification, right? I don't want to do that anymore because I feel like I need to monitor my kid all the time. This world is so ungodly. Yes, there are still good people in this world, but we live in a society now. <laughs> we live in a society. <laughs> So, <laughs> yeah, and, but, 
Okay, at the same time, the whole COVID thing kind of wanted me, kind of made me want to be a paramedic even more because there was not enough. There's just like an overwhelming need for medics, you know? And, oh my gosh, TikTok, I, I would never let my daughter on TikTok. I will stomp on her phone before she makes a TikTok. <laughs> Hopefully, you know what, I'm hoping, I'm hoping and praying that all of this woke garbage will blow over and die out before she gets old enough. I'm hoping that I, I really want to be a paramedic so bad. I have a dummy arm and everything. I have all the books. I have all the ALS books for pediatric and regular cardiac. I, I, I wanted to do it so bad. <laughs> I really, really wanted to do it so bad. But the more that I think about it, The more that I'm like, I should be a stay-at-home mom. Like, always. So that I have the time to... I feel like... I feel like I'm going to have to unindoctrinate her every day that she comes home from school. Because <laughs> whoever said... Whoever said this, they're right. I don't think the woke... BS is gonna go away. I'm hoping it's gonna go away, but I don't think it's gonna go away. <laughs> I really don't think it's gonna go away. <laughs> Just move to the deep south and use private Christian schools. I, w I wish. <laughs> I, I, I talked to my husband about homeschooling her, but we, we both agreed that since she's an only child, it's probably the best that she goes to school for the friends. To have friends. But what I can do is, like, if she comes home and says, Mommy, Mommy, this and that, World War II, I'm gonna be like, let me pop on a documentary about the Bolshevik Revolution real quick, and then you'll really see the truth. <laughs> I found out some things recently that would make your hair curl. I won't go too much into it, but uh, I found out that Germany did not start anything. Like, I was poked and prodded until he retaliated. The, o the only thing that he did was call out some globalist Zionist bankers that literally drove Germany into the ground. Yeah. Go, go watch Oh, I can type? I can say something? But yeah, go watch, go, go watch Europa The Last Battle. On bitch shoot. It's very interesting. <laughs> it's very interesting. There is at get so there during the Nuremberg trials, the people that held the trials were communists. And guess who funded 
the communists, America and Britain. So we have been in bed with communism since the, the 40s. No, no one can be trusted. History is written by the victor, but it's not necessarily the truth. So all I'm saying is go watch Europa The Last Battle on BitChute. It's really good. Anyways, the, the point I was trying to make is, is that when my, when my kid goes to school, I'm going to have to spend all of my time, like, asking her what she learned, making sure that it's not some, like, there was, I've seen, I've seen pictures of teachers, like, sending home work, like, worksheets, talking about how Donald Trump was a horrible person. Whether that's the truth or not, a teacher doesn't need to be sending that home with, like, a 12-year-old. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? That's, like, total indoctrination. Children should not have a political opinion. That's, that's not right. Children have a very small concept of politics going into civics class. They don't, they don't need to be told how to think about a president or a person. I'll tell you right now. I'll tell you right now, y'all. If my kid ever comes home with a paper or tells me that she heard the words white guilt at school from her teacher, I'm going to lose it. <laughs> I have no problem with anyone, and y'all know this. Chil children in school are learning that if, if they're white, then they're they're bad people. Y'all, y'all know, I am, I do not act like any type of way. I don't think I'm better than anybody, but <clears throat> in, actually in New York, in New York, some parents were sent home with a worksheet talking about the levels of, there's like, white as like from white colonizer to white trader and everything in between this is from a public school a public school and i said oh lord this is not happening in my town because <laughs> me and the principal are gonna have words <laughs> Oh yeah, it's bad. Hmm? Hmm? What? My mom's cold. I gotta go, you guys. It's getting kind of late. But I just wanted to say goodbye to everybody. And that I'm doing great. And... Yeah. I'll miss you guys, but... I won't miss Periscope.
Thank you. Thank you very much. I hope all of you have a really wonderful life. And I know I said a year ago that I hope I never get on scope again, but I just couldn't resist coming back and telling everybody how everything turned out and it's good. And if any of you ladies want to talk to me, you know my email. Bye.